What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Gustin back in the physics classroom. Today, we're talking about constant acceleration problems in kinematics. Basic problems using a few of our uh, equations that we've learned so far this year. I want to talk through uh, one example problem with you to hopefully help you jump off uh, into your homework for the evening. So, uh, we talked about this during class though. Every physics problem that we handle, especially in kinematics and in forces, but everyone in general, I can't really think of one where I won't want this to happen. You want to draw a picture. You want to draw a picture. You want to label it with all the variables that you're given, things that you know, secret unknowns if things start from rest or if things are dropped, labeling gravity, these kind of things. Always label your picture. It will make selecting your equation that much easier. So. I'm looking at problem number one on our constant accelerations problems. And here's what I have. I have a bobsled going down an incline. It starts from rest. So I've labeled the initial is zero meters per second. And I know the acceleration is four meters per second squared. That's all I know in the prompt of the problem. Let's look at question A. Question A says, after five seconds, how far has it gone? How far has it gone is basically telling me what is the final position if the initial position I'm calling zero meters. How far has it gone? So I look at what I have and I have initial velocity and I have acceleration. I'm looking for delta x or x final and I'm given in this part of the problem that time is five seconds. So here it is. I'm given time. I'm given velocity initial. I'm given uh, acceleration and I'm looking for change in position. Well, I'm going to look at my equation sheet. And if you don't have an equation sheet, go download it from Canvas. Uh, but if I do look at it, there's two equations I can use here. And only one of them, the second one, my quadratic equation right up there, is going to give me position information. So I have to use that one. So next step is to write that equation down. X final equals initial position plus initial velocity times time. One half a t squared. It's my quadratic equation. I start plugging some things in. Initial velocity is zero. Initial position is zero. X final is equal to one half a t squared. This is my final equation. I can start plugging some numbers into. Final position is equal to one half times that acceleration, which is four meters per second squared times five seconds squared. I get my calculator out and I'm looking at uh, 220, 50. X final is 50 meters. There's my first answer, 50 meters. I can use my calculator or do it in my head. Either one, check your math. There it is. Picture, information, equation, plug in and solve. Let's try B. B asks for, again, after five seconds, how far or how fast is it going? That's different. I'm now asking for a final velocity after a time being equal to five seconds. So that's what I'm solving for now. Well, again, let's look back at our equation sheet. I've got the top two from kinematics so far. The top equation is going to give me my speed or velocity information that doesn't exist in my quadratic because the quadratic has velocity in it, but only initial velocity, whereas the top equation up there has got velocity final and velocity initial. So we can use that one. V final is equal to V initial plus a t. I start plugging the information in. Initial velocity is zero. V final is equal to the acceleration, four meters per second squared, times the time, which is five. My final velocity is 20 meters per second. There we go. Again, that detailed picture really helps me when it comes to selecting an equation. Question C says, what is the average velocity after five seconds. It doesn't give me any more information. It just asks for the final uh, average velocity uh, over that, that five seconds. And there's two equations we have for average velocity. Either one is going to give you the right answer. I've got V final plus V initial over two. I can use that one. Or I can use change in position or displacement over time. Both of these will give me the same answer. I'm a big fan of using this one right now, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I could plug them both in simultaneously. So final velocity, we said, was 20 meters per second plus that zero initial over two should be equal to 50 
meters divided by the five seconds, both of these end up being 10 meters per second as my average velocity. Either way I slice it, I end up with the same equation. That's wonderful because those equations should be equal. Now I change the question a little bit. Uh, I'm no longer talking about the five seconds. I have all this information, but I'm not concerned with five seconds. Now I'm asking you how far has it traveled by the time its velocity is 40 meters per second. So I'm, I'm 40 meters per second is now a final velocity. I don't know time anymore, so I can't rely on those equations. And I'm looking for how far it travels. So I'm looking for final position, assuming that my initial position was zero meters. Well, if I go back over to my kinematics equations, I actually have a third equation that gives me some information. Where am I at? Right here. V squared final equals V initial squared plus 2A times delta x, or change in position, or x final minus x initial. It doesn't include time. And since part D doesn't give me any information about time, I have to use that equation for the first time ever in class. So let's see what that looks like. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A. I call it delta x, but you can, of course, call it x final minus x initial. So I plug these things in now. Uh, initial velocity is 0. Final velocity is 40 meters per second. I'm going to have to square that. That's equal to 2 times the acceleration, which is still 4 meters per second squared. That has not changed. And lastly, I'm trying to find my change in x or my final position. I'm going to have to do uh, some calculator work here. I'm not great with squares. So we'll do 40 squared. And we'll divide that by 2 times 4, or 8. And we'll end up with a position, a 200 meters is equal to delta x, which is equal to x final minus x initial. So x final ends up being 200 meters. Now that's an equation we haven't used before, so I want to make sure that you know the top three equations give us a lot of information. The first equation, as we break this down, the first equation is going to be useful when I know final and initial velocity and time. So when I have velocities and time, this is the equation I'm going to want to use. My quadratic is super helpful when I want to use uh, position and time. If I have position and time data along with acceleration, this equation is super, super helpful. And the third equation becomes really useful if I don't know any information about time. If I don't know how long something travels for or how long it's moving for, no time information really, really, really means let's go ahead and use this v squared equation. And we haven't seen it yet, but if you're mastering plugging into these equations over here, it should be no problem to plug into a new equation with similar variables. All right? This is an example, uh, example problem for objects in constant non-zero acceleration. Give it a shot. Go finish your homework. See what you got. Bring it in tomorrow with questions. All right? See ya!